This is Blazers All Access, an inside look at UAB basketball with head coach Andy Kennedy. Blazers All Access is presented by Viva Health, part of the UAB Health System, and by Mountain Dew. Do the do. Here's the voice of the Blazers, David Crane. We close out 2022 with two more conference games this weekend as UTEP and UTSA pay a visit to the Magic City. Happy holidays, everyone. Wake, uh, welcome to Blazers All Access with head coach Andy Kennedy. You opened the Conference USA slate last week with Charlotte here in Birmingham before Christmas. Yeah, a little odd. I've been doing this 16 years. It's the first time that we've had a conference game pre-Christmas. Makes me nervous. You know, coaches get a little... Uh, nervous with the last game before the Christmas break because you realize some guys may be thinking about other things. Thankfully, we were locked in enough to get a quality win against a quality team. A very different style you faced with Charlotte, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought you made a great analogy in our pregame radio show prior to Charlotte is that it's almost like preparing for the wishbone. <laughs> you know, you can watch it on tape, but to, to go and to get the reps against it, it's just so different. You don't see it in this day and age of college basketball very much. Everything's going through their five man in the high post, a lot of backdoor cuts, a lot of handoffs, and a lot of three pointers. And I thought early we were probably overly conscious of the backdoor actions. We were a little soft on our ball screen coverage and we were giving up some threes. Charlotte got off to a good start. We made some adjustments, did what we needed to do. Yeah, we'll take it kind of half by half. And, and it did seem like everybody was sort of feeling things out there against Charlotte in, in the first couple of minutes. Well, we're a team defensively. For us to have success, we need to be aggressive in a lot of our different coverages. And based on some of the uncertainty of, of their offensive actions, I thought we were a little passive. We were playing back a little bit too much. Once we realized, hey, this is not who we are, we made some adjustments and uh, we're able to get the game more up and down. Was it just a matter of being a little more aggressive on the defensive end? More aggressive, more aggressive and then changing some of the ways in which we were guarding some different actions. And once we made those adjustments, it allowed us to get out in the open floor. And, you know, we talked about before, you don't really control tempo. We're fifth in the country as fastest pace of tempo. I think Charlotte was about 358 <laughs> out of 363 in the country, which gives you, uh, there's a huge uh, uh, difference <laughs> there in philosophies. So we couldn't really control it with our defense. You can control it with your offense by scoring baskets, then getting into pressures. And I thought once we were able to do that, we changed the course of the game. One point, the Blazers were down seven. They wound up leading by seven at the break. Here's a look at some of the first half action from Bartow Arena. <laughs> are brought to you by Viva Health. You weren't thinking about a Medicare plan back then, but at Viva Medicare, it's been on our mind for a long time. And we know a thing or two about making Medicare easy. That's why our plans have $0 co-pays for primary care physician visits. So when the time comes to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan that focuses on the things you're passionate about, we'll be here for you. Viva Medicare. Enjoy life without the worry. Learn more at vivahealth.com slash Medicare. Legacy is what you do every day. We try not only to help people with their financial legacies, we hope that we enrich their lives and help them become better people so that that total package at the end of the day is something they can be proud of. We help them craft their legacy. We welcome you back to Blazes All Access with head coach Andy Kennedy. UAB led Charlotte 35-28 at halftime last week in the Conference USA opener. And you really did a nice job, I thought, of picking up kind of where you left off there in the first half. Had a great close to the first half. Uh, we came in and, and we were able to talk through, through some things. Uh, guys then understood, hey, this is the way in which we need to play in order to have a chance to be successful. But we started out the second half tremendously. Got the lead to about 10 or 12. I had it at 15 with about three to play. Didn't close the game as strongly as I would have liked. But once we got it above 10, it never really felt like it was a threat moving forward. 
And when you play a team that, again, is going to be very conservative offensively and really drain the shot clock, it's good to have a double-digit lead, and we established that early in the second half. Backtracking just a little bit. Both sides were a little short-handed. Charlotte because of illness. You, unfortunately, because of injury. Um, Ladarius Brewer out, hand injury. But it seems as if the news is not all that bad with him, hopefully returning soon. Yeah, he hurt his hand in, a, in a, just a, a freak thing in practice. Got caught up in a loose ball. Somebody pulled it, and we didn't even know it when it happened. He looks over there, and his hand's swollen. We get an MRI. It's broken. Surgery happened the very next day, thankfully, before all of the medical personnel had taken off for the break, so we were able to get it in a healing process. Um, you know, Charlotte was missing a guy for illness. It was averaging about 10 a game. L.A. was about a nine-point-per-game guy for us. It was kind of a wash. We didn't know how quickly he would respond. He is responding well. He's been back in practice, not contact yet, uh, trying to get his grip strength back, trying to get comfortable, so it's a day-to-day -day situation. As you mentioned, stretch lead out to as many as 15 in the second half. We'll talk more about him a little bit later, but Trey Jemison was one of the reasons why he finishes with a double-double and did a lot of that work in the second half. He was you. tremendous. You know, it was really a, a, a different style. Charlotte ran a lot of their offense through their five-man Khalifa. He made four threes. He really had Trey away from the basket, which is obviously not his comfort zone. Trey is a tremendous presence for us at the basket. Block shots, defensive rebounds, one of the best in the country, and he was finishing at a very efficient rate. So it was two differing styles. I thought Trey, at the end of the day, not only did we get the win, but I thought Trey did a great job of solidifying his presence. Blazers went on to the 76-68 win over the 49ers, and here's a look at some of the second half action. All right, stats and talk a little more to Trey. In three, two, one. Green and Gold sit at 10 and two overall, one and zero in the league after knocking off Charlotte. Here's a look at the final stats from that game. Blazers shooting 47 percent overall, about 47 percent from three as well. Bit of an off night at the foul line, but the Green and Gold did a nice job on the glass and fast break points. Coach, I know that's one of the categories you like to keep an eye on and, and awfully important for the success of your basketball team. 17 to 4 edge when you were able to get out and run a little bit. Well, we've got a very fast backcourt. Jelly and Eric Gaines, probably two of the fastest guys combined in college basketball in that backcourt. So we want to be able to play in, in the full court as much as possible. Can't do that unless you get defensive stops. We were able to string together some defensive stops, which allowed us to get out in the open floor. Finished with four players in double figures. Jordan Walker with his usual 25. <laughs> Eric Gaines had 14. Ty Brewer had 12, and as mentioned, Trey Jemison, 12 points, 12 rebounds. He is our player of the week. He's been exceptionally good on the glass for you as of late. Yeah, he's been very consistent. He's done a better job this year, his senior year, last go-round of staying out of foul trouble. We're able to rest him earlier in games with the addition of Javion Davis because Javion gives us a physical presence as well. Uh, allows Trey to play longer segments in the second half. Again, he's doing a good job of staying out of foul trouble, and he continues to give us a tremendous presence in the paint. You read my mind or, or read the script. The help you've been able to get him this year. So that's, that's, a, that's a big young man who had to play a lot of minutes for you. It's nice to give him a little extra, more extra, extra rest this year. Isn't it? And, and especially early in the game. When you, give him, when you give him rest early in the game, then depending upon time and situation, you can play him extended minutes in the second half. That's what we did against Charlotte, and he produced. We'll preview the upcoming weekend at home when we come back. Blazers All Access is sponsored by Regions Bank. This segment of Blazers All Access 
is sponsored by Legacy Credit Union. We close out 2022 here at home. Two more conference games. First up, a visit from UTEP on Thursday night. The Miners coming to the matchup 8-4 and four overall, 1-0 in the league coach. Pretty good win for them to start conference play. 60-55 to 55 over Louisiana Tech back on December the 17th. Yeah, they had to, you know, it was kind of get it in where you can. The pre-Christmas <laughs> conference game, everybody had to work it in. Uh, and that must have worked for La Tech and UTEP. UTEP's a good basketball team. Uh, Joe, Dooley, uh, Joe Golden has done a great job of forming their identity. It's a different team than we played last year in that a lot of guys have left, a lot of new guys in in this day and age of college basketball, but their DNA is the same. Very physical, very tough, tough on the glass. Everything's downhill. We're going to have to really be ready for a physical altercation. Yeah, we were chatting about it beforehand. It seems like it, it may be another grinded out game Similar to what you had in Charlotte, but not as far as tempo. As you said, it's more about toughness with this bunch of Yeah, this team doesn't play quite as slow as Charlotte, but, but their, their, their DNA is different. They don't rely on a lot of three-point shooting. Everything is downhill. I think they're fourth in the country in most free throws attempted per game, which kind of tells you what their mindset is. Everything's going to be inside out, so we'll have to be ready for that challenge. It's always nice to settle into somewhat of a normal routine after what you alluded to earlier what can be a very challenging stretch for a coach, that game before Christmas and that first practice after Christmas. Yeah, no question, because, you know, our guys got off uh, for a three-day period, and uh, it was a much-needed break for us all. When you get back, you've got to reestablish the rhythm of the season. We're getting into conference play now. Two huge opportunities for us, starting with UTEP on Thursday night to, to lead into conference play. Tip time Thursday night, 6.30 here in Birmingham. Pre-game starts at 6 o'clock on 100.5 FM Jocks 2. Then on Saturday, UTSA visits Bartow for a New Year's Eve showdown. We'll tip it off against the Roadrunners at 3 o'clock. Pre-game starts at 2.30. Both games will be available on ESPN+. Plus. Good luck this weekend and, and Happy New Year a little early. Hey, Happy New Year to you, David. Thank you. For Coach Kennedy, I'm David Crane. We thank you for being with us. Hope you'll spend the last weekend of the year with us here in Birmingham and join us next time right here on Blazers All Access. Blazers All Access has been presented by Mountain Dew, Do the Dew, and by Viva Health, part of the UAB Health System. This has been a presentation of the Blazers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.